in what's been the most tumultuous college basketball season in recent memory, most likely in the entire history of the sport. There is something to look forward to as the NCAA tournament is just a couple months away as it begins on March 16th this year. And with that being said, the net rankings are uh, being released and the first edition was released earlier this week, which the net rankings for anyone that doesn't know is the is is one of the systems that uh, the selection committee uses to determine who makes it into the field and where they are seated, uh, splitting up home wins, home losses, away record, neutral site record, which uh, doesn't really hold that much weight this season, and quad one through quad four victories. So there's always, in any type of ranking, teams that are just too high and teams that maybe are a little bit too low. So welcome to another edition of Courtside with Sam Barber. I'm Sam Barber, and today we are doing just that, highlighting who is just a bit too high and who is a bit too low in the first edition of the net rankings. And we begin in the Patriot League with the Colgate Raiders. They are coming in at 16th in um, 16th in the first net rankings, and the Raiders were pegged as the preseason favorites in the Patriot League due to the conference is late start due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We haven't really been able to see what the what this Colgate team is all about, uh, with the exception of Army and Navy. And this is a team that split their season series with Army, so they're one and one on the season. And they rank 134th in the Ken Palm rankings. And two plus sides for Colgate, rather, are is that their two games, uh, Jordan Burns and Nellie Cummings, have been absolutely on fire. They're averaging in double figures for Colgate. On the other hand, Colgate has been incredibly successful in recent seasons. In the past two seasons, um, more specifically, they have averaged 20-plus wins. Uh, but until Matt Langle's team can start running the table in the Patriot League, they should not be ranking and not and should not be cracking the top 20. And going to the Power Fives, Arizona, they are 21st in the first edition of the debt rankings. And off the court, it has been quite the rocky few seasons uh, for Sean Miller's club in Tucson, and mainly because of the FBI in recruiting investigation, which saw the Wildcats self-imposed a one-year postseason ban that has drawn criticism and applauds from both sides of the argument. And the Wildcats are a tough team to read this year. Uh, their best win is coming against Colorado, which seems to be an NCAA tournament-bound team this year and a team that can potentially compete for a Pac-12 title. However, they uh, this is a team that is struggling, that struggled against the likes of Eastern Washington, Montana, and UTEP, who have a combined record of 12 and 14. And our three mid-major programs, the former two, with Eastern Washington and Montana being two programs that are usually heavyweights in the big sky, however, are not this season. And uh, But one thing to like about the 2020-21 Arizona Wildcats is the development of junior guard uh, James Akinjo. He is growing and is leading this Wildcats team in scoring and assists. So look out for the Wildcats to potentially be a, um, a spoiler for any team such as Oregon or Colorado that is looking to cash in on a Pac-12 title. And the next is Winthrop. The Winthrop Eagles come in at 39th on the season. And to put it lightly, the Big South is just a colossal mess right now. Uh, the conference has a combined record of 43-65, and 65, so not really getting off to the best start. And um, with Winthrop leading, they are leading the charge at 9-0. and And fans of the Eagles should be excited um, because this... They're undoubtedly a mid-major team that has be definitely been turning heads. We knew that Winthrop was going to be really the kings of the Big South this season, but we did not we did not know uh, to this magnitude. But despite the unblemished record, uh, there has been a statistic that is s s really sticking out like a sore thumb, and that is that they have yet to play a quad one team, and they won't play a quad one team unless they make it to the NCAA tournament. Uh, this is a team that 
Their best win is against a fellow mid-major in Furman, which the Furman Paladins are most likely going to be the SoCon auto bid this year. It doesn't really seem like anyone is challenging the Paladins in the Southern Conference this year, so a win against Furman is nothing to sneeze at. However, um, I do expect Winthrop to really run the table and could potentially go undefeated in Big South play, but ranking them in the top 40 just is is definitely a controversial conversation starter, and it just it seems to be a bit premature. Now, on the other side, there are three teams and three Power 5 teams that are definitely ranked just a little bit too low, and we begin with the Kansas Jayhawks. They are ranked 27th, which I'm I, I'm dumbfounded that you were ranking the Jayhawks outside the top 15, or even top 10 for that matter, and before Saturday's, last Saturday's 25-point blowout loss to Texas, which was the worst home loss under Bill Self, the Jayhawks looked poised, really, and looked poised to hold a high ranking in the inaugural net rankings and that didn't happen. KU finds themselves really l in the, on the outside of looking in on the top 25, despite owning three quad one victories and four wins against ranked opponents this season. And Bill Sev's team, they all, they have all the necessary pieces to run the show, and we know that they've been able to do that for the better part of two decades, and they have all the pieces to compete with the likes of Baylor, Texas, West Virginia, Texas Tech, and this is, they, Bill Self knows how to coach a championship-laden team. And any, any reason for concern in Lawrence is undoubtedly premature. And I will preface this as before we hit, hit our next team, that this was before Minnesota's embarrassing 25-point loss to now remaining undefeated Michigan uh, last night. And the Big Ten is undoubtedly the most deep conference in the in college basketball this season. Anyone who argues otherwise is plain foolish. And on the given on any given night, there is with the exception maybe of Nebraska, anyone could beat anyone. It's it, it, it's really boiling down to that and I'd even add Penn State into that anyone could beat anyone category. A team that has really been flying under the radar are is Minnesota. And we have known that Richard Pitino, the son of Hall of Famer Rick Pitino, who is now coaching at Iona, is has been on the hot seat in the Twin Cities as of late. And if he is trying to put those rumors to bed, then he's going to have to have a tremendous season with the Golden Gophers. And it is panning out like it's going to be just that. They stand at 10-3, and three, and they've cashed in on marquee wins over Iowa and Michigan State and, and St. Louis, who is going to be probably the best team in the Atlantic 10, and that's just to name a few. Uh, they are led by the offensive, uh, offensively versatile player in Marcus Carr. Obviously, he, he didn't have it's just a good game last night against the Wolverines, being held to 5 of 16 shooting for just 14 points. However, before that, he was averaging 22 points per game, 4.1 rebounds per game, and 5.9 assists per game. So he is the all-around player that the Golden Gophers need to make a run at the Big 12 at the Big 10 title. rather. And this is a team that could sneak in as a top three seed come March Madness. And the final team we're sticking in the Big 10, the Michigan State Spartans. They're ranked 119th. 119th. And we know what Tom Izzo can do, much like the first entry of the Who's Too Low, Bill Self and Tom Izzo, they're two legendary coaches. They know how to get it done. And, the, and Tom Izzo, he his Michigan State team has taken his fans on quite the bumpy ride in the early portions of the season. Uh, they fired off three straight losses by an average of 15.3 points per game. Any team at, at the level that Michigan State is at is going to raise the red flag if you were dropping three straight games. And it is quite unorthodox for any of Tom Izzo's teams to do uh, just that and drop three games. But despite fueling the conversation that Blue Blood programs have been struggling, we know Kentucky, we know North Carolina and Duke are uh, the Blue Blood programs that have really struggled out of the gate, there is no real, any real concern for this team is premature. They're, they're coming off a... 
tremendous victory and a significant Big Ten victory over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, who have received plenty of preseason hype. Um, and the way I see it is Michigan State is just fueling to the depth of this conference. And they are, they're, which for any Big Ten fan, they should like that. And they, with the competitiveness of this conference, it is just fueling the fire that could potentially see this Big Ten season have 12 teams into the NCAA tournament, which we know the record is 11 coming from the Big East, the old Big East conference in 2011. So I see that the Big Ten is going to potentially challenge that record and get maybe 12 to 13 teams. I would say maybe not 13 teams. I don't see Penn State getting in, but potentially 12 teams into the field of 68 come March. And finally, how I see it is that the Big Ten race is going to be a one of the hot, most hotly contested conference races that we are going to see this season. Buckle up, Big Ten fans, because this is going to be um, a, a really, I'd say, an 8-10 to 10 deep race for the Big Ten title, and one that is not going to be decided until the end of February. Uh, if, you, if you liked what you saw, please be sure to subscribe to Courtside with Sam Barber and ring the bell for notifications and new videos.